Ladies and gentlemen, the following fight is scheduled for three rounds of action in the light heavyweight division and is a PFL versus Bellator contest. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner and representing Bellator. He's a wrestling specialist and stands six feet tall. He weighed officially at 205 pounds and holds a professional MMA record of 15 wins and seven losses. 13 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Pina de Leo, Cuba, the soldier of God, you And his opponent fighting out of the red corner and representing PFL. He's a striking specialist and stands six feet two. He went in officially at 205.2 pounds and in his 34 fight career has built a record of 22 victories, 11 defeats and one no contest. 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting at the Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Thiago Moreta. Your referee in charge, Brian Miner. Brian Miner will oversee the action. Thiago Santos in the blue trunks. Yoel Romero wearing black. Yoel, you ready? Thiago, you ready? Come on, come on. Southpaw stands for Romero. A lean Thiago Santos. We haven't seen his body look this lean in quite a few fights. We'll see how that comes into play later. Thiago hurt a little bit, making weight. I saw him in the hotels, the very first thing he said, he said, hey, I'd love to talk and catch up with you. I can't. This was one day before weigh-ins, his voice was dry, he was starting to lose some sweat. I share that with you. I can all but assure you, Thiago's gonna win the first round. But the answer is why. The why is Joel doesn't get going. He always uses the first round as a warm-up. If history is a trajectory to the future here, he'll do it again. Lots of hip feints from both of these guys, both threatening the rear leg kick. Both incredibly powerful, and it might be a case of whoever goes first is risking the most. There's a famous clip. It was Yoel Romero in his very first fight. He's standing in this posture, toe to toe, looking at the guy bouncing around. Joel drops all the way to the mat, grabs the guy by the heel, stands up and lifts his foot over his head. That's how he took him down. The speed at which he can move when he decides to go is terrifying. Even at this age, of, you know, in, into his late 40s now, he's a sniper, and with the power that he's got, the physicality that he's got, when he decides to move, you've got to get out of the way. You've got to make sure you're covered. You can't think about countering. Santos here is waiting to try and see where Yo Romero is going to open up his game, where he's going to expose himself first. 29 finishes between these two men. Not a lot of folks thinking we will see the judges' scorecards in this light heavyweight contest. Stomping you know, kick to the lead leg there from Romero. You know how damaging that was against uh, Rob Whitaker. Lovely feint from both of these guys. There's the head kick again from Mahetta. Each of them have tested one so far in the early goings of this fight. Two minutes down now. A lot of respect being shown, and understandably so. One strike from either of these men can change everything in a PFL versus Bellator contest. Switching stances there, Romero steps in, throws the right hand. Santos offers one right down the pipe. A little thumbs up from Romero, I think, to his corner. There's John Jones. In the traditional Saudi garb. Getting a little pop from the crowd. You can see the focus from John Jones. He knows how dangerous both of these guys are. You cannot take your eyes off this fight. I'd like to see Santos start to use that cross a little more, even to cover up his head kick. Well, he just gave... Yoel Romero, a little something to read that we'll see if it comes into play later. He reached down to try and block the body kick. And we know what Yoel can do, bringing that thing upstairs. Yoel won the world championship in wrestling. He was second 
in the Olympic Games in wrestling. Yoel has attempted zero wrestling in this fight. And guys, he might not. It's one thing that would open his hands up a little more. Offer the threat. Everybody knows the resume on him. Everybody knows what I just said. They've seen the tapes. Offer that threat. And I think it's a mistake when Yoel doesn't do more of it. Well, we've got John Jones here in the bottom of our screen. Anybody at the table fought John Jones? Anyone know what that's like? Yeah, I fought John. Oh, I fought John Jones. You fought John Jones. Not long, but I fought him. <laughs> it was like, guys, it was like being locked in a cage with a bear. Very tentative, this is from Santos. A lot of respect he's given for your Romero. But what that's allowing Romero to do is to hold the center. Big miss oh. there from Romero, puts him off balance, but Santos not able to chase it down and make him pay. Dan, could you imagine, though, to my point, could you imagine being an Olympic medalist in wrestling and not use that tool, not even threaten it? it it's crazy to me. I mean, we've seen it throughout his career. Because he's such a, a powerful athlete, it's almost like he wants to show people how dangerous he can be with his strikes. I mean, the height he gets on his flying knees is incredible, but I would like to see him utilize his wrestling more. I have to wonder whether it's a question about fatigue because three five minute rounds of wrestling in mixed martial arts with strikes and submission attempts is very different. Well, and at age 46, Chell, I'll submit to you the question whether or not it has something to do with injury history, because if you have back problems, ooh, oh. Santos landed one in that combination, but Romero ducks away from the rest. There in the black trunks, Thiago Santos ready to start round number two in the blue. Tim Sylvia, when he was a world champion, used to wear that belt around, and people would tease him. I thought he looked cool. I wanted to win it. I was going to wear it just like he did. Every, I'm talking about you go to the Walmart, you're wearing the belt. You get on an airplane, belt. See, this is where you need a ring, you see. You can't be wearing a belt all the time. <laughs> I, I want to know what kind of person is teasing the UFC heavyweight champion, Tim Sylvia. But... Hey, I, I was saying I thought he looked cool. Boy, there, there's a lot going on here by Tiago. Tiago just attempted an axe kick, and he got half of it done. The foot did come up to one side of the head. Oh, there's that takedown attempt. <laughs> Almost. The distance wasn't there, but you just saw an incredibly explosive, and you saw speed. Yoel Romero still got the speed. He dropped down, ran a couple steps on his knees, and popped back up before Tiago knew what happened. I like that front kick to the midsection from Santos. That would be a very useful thing to manage the distance between them, especially given the fact that he's got the height and reach advantage and the fact that Romero doesn't tend to catch kicks and take people down from them. Slightly less risky against than, than it would be against someone like a Johnny Eblen. Romero switching stances here a couple of times in this round. We saw him do it with strikes in round number one. Front kick almost came up through the guard of Romero there. Steps just outside range. Combination attempted there from Santos. A lot more output from Hammer here in round two. That was a better combination. I like the body kick to the left hook. That was a clever combination. A little bit more volume out of uh, Santos would do a really do, do him a real service. He is allowing Romero to set the pace and dictate when they exchange, and that is not going to win in this fight. Thiago Santos' legs might become a liability for him later in this fight. He, he kind of stubbed his toe on the mat in round number one. He's eaten a couple of leg kicks, and obviously every one of those at this weight can be very impactful. And we know how damaging uh, Yo Romero can be to the knees of his opponent, so we know the damage that Santos has already taken. He can't be standing there taking those oblique kicks, those chasse kicks to the knee. Santos had a surgery. He's got well-documented knee problems in the past. I'm going back a couple of years, but all the same, ACL on one leg, MCL on the other, it's tough, and Yoel is chopping away at that. At a minimum, it's having a mental effect on Santos. Well, it's caused him to switch stances here. He's now standing southpaw in round number two. And Yoel happy to attack that alternate lead leg. It's a, it's a tricky spot because the textbook says if you're Santos, you close the distance. That's how you protect those knees. But the textbook also says you don't close the distance and clinch with the Olympic medalist. Santos trying to work behind his jab. Francis Ngannou just walked in to take his place cage side. Oh, head kick bounces off the guard partially there for Santos. Joel Romero starting to put some things together here. 
Santos is not liking those low kicks. Keeps switching his stance here. I wonder why. I wonder if it's because he's trying to set things something up or because he's trying to avoid taking kicks to those legs. I would guess that it's more of the latter. And again, when you take the legs away from a power puncher, not only does it cause him to be hesitant, but it just saps power from those strikes. Removes that efficient chain of motion from the floor through your fist. Santos needs to start putting some things together here. He's been a little too hesitant. His feints are working. Every time he feints, he draws the hands of Yoel Romero out of shape. There are pockets and opportunities for him to capitalize, but he has to chain things together. You can see Romero reaches for kicks, he reaches for punches, but he feels like because he's got cat-like reflexes, he can get out of the way. Santos has got to throw volume. We're watching a, a very risk-averse game plan from both of these individuals, even late into round number two. Someone's gonna have to seize control of this fight. There's a head kick attempted again from Yoel Romero. I tell you what, it's a hard one. It really is a hard one to judge. It's all right, hey, that's taking a toll here. That's a meaningful toll that the judges weren't just able to see on Santos. Santos has got to stay busier with that jab. Every time he jabs, Yoel's not countering him. He's respecting, he's allowing that offense to be a defense. If you're Santos, get busy. Santos has hidden it very well up to this point, but those last two low kicks, I felt like it was very telling, the posture. He showed the pain. In his, in his movement after those. He's gonna have to do something in this last round if he's gonna, gonna make an impact on the scorecards. Mike Tyson sort of took Francis' side in that whole thing. A psychological effect. <laughs> round three, touch of the gloves. Thiago Santos, very, very hesitant in round number two. Needs to get busy if he wants to beat Yoel Romero, who swings away with the left. First round was hard to score. Second round, I felt like Romero landed some really meaningful low kicks. And now he's dominating the center again. Beautiful head movement there. That's gonna make Santos even more hesitant to throw if he's missing every time he does. It's incredible, really, the presence that Jorn Romero has. There are a few fighters that can stand in front of you and just edge forward, and people don't want to engage them. I can feel it. From right. where I'm sitting, I can fit Dan, I feel like a TKO is a moment away. But from either guy, they're both trying to finish. They just are looking for their opportunity. And with Yoel, he's always in range. He oh. always puts himself in that fire. I think we made the point of how dangerous Thiago Santos can be when he really gets things going. He almost knocked off the guy who a lot of people consider the greatest fighter in the world in John Jones. But right now, I mean, even when he's in range, he's having a hard time letting his hands go because of that intimidation factor, because his legs are coming out from underneath him with these kicks. Back in the orthodox stands now, that was a beautiful knee. If you look closely, you can see some swelling on the calf of the lead leg of Romero, the left leg. This is potentially why he's spending a lot of time southpaw. Noel Romero used that underhook and almost bowled Thiago Santos right over. Santos able to stay on his feet, but now he's chest to chest. Expect an elbow on the break here. Nice short knees on the inside. on the exit there from Santos. More of that is what you need to see from him if he wants to win this fight. And, and I'll tell you what, only two or three more of that. That was a very good combination. I'm not sure why we don't see more of it. Early on, I surmised, well, perhaps he's worried about those takedowns and he want to expose himself. Now I'm surmising maybe his knees bother him a little bit, but when he lets those hands go, he's having success, and his time ticked down, he's got to take a little more risk. you got to take a risk. Your path to victory here, if you're Thiago Santos, is not to dance around on the outside and let Yoel Romero kick you in the calves a few more times. He's got to commit to some combinations here. As difficult as that is, as you saw, he just tried to plant that rear leg, and his foot slipped out from underneath him. Of course, sitting here cage side, it's always easier said than done, Dan Hardy. 
But there's high stakes in this fight. There are. Santos is moving, but he's, he's finding it very difficult to step forward to punch. You can see that instability on his legs. Neither, neither leg is really supporting him fully, so that's undermining his punching power. But if he starts to move forward into range and start to put volume together, something will get through. I do like the Kung Fu, though, from Yo Romero. We've seen it in, in his career. He'll drop his hands, he'll stand there, he'll do whatever he wants. He's not scared of anything because he knows people aren't going to shoot on him. And frankly, anybody, whether Yoel's doing it, Nick Diaz is doing it, like, there's something to that, that motion where everyone's looking, going, hey, what's he doing? Does he know something I don't? Right. When the reality is, he's just playing around. Kind of hypnotizes the opponent for a moment. They're wondering exactly what's going on. And the thing is with Romero, when he starts to get excited and starts to move like that, you're expecting in an attack to come. Those low kicks are very telling. Redness on the inside and outside of both the legs of Santos and that left leg calf, we can see the swelling protruding out from the front of his shin bone. Romero rushes forward. Santos tries a check hook on the retreat. And, and for those watching at home, the canvas is not slippery. It's just that Santos is having a hard time putting weight on both legs. So he's skidding around a little bit. And not only is it undermining his forward movement and his attack, but it's also slowing him down, escaping from range when Romero starts to move forward, which is making him very vulnerable. I like those black Bellator gloves. Might have to get myself a pair of them. Yeah, he looks cool, doesn't he, man? Oh! There's some commitment on the attack with 30 seconds left in this fight. Oh, that leg really gave out. Those two bad knees, those two surgeries that Santos required, that happened in his fight with John Jones, and I must give him credit, he finished that fight, the same as he's finishing you well. This oh. man is hurt, this man is a tough competitor who's trying to win a fight. He just ate a big left hand. Didn't seem to bother him all that much in these final seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. The judges scored this bout 30-27, 30-27, and 29-28. All for your winner by unanimous decision. Your winner!